As you likely know, testosterone levels are on the decline. Testosterone levels have declined some 30% over the last 15 years alone. We know that men's testosterone levels now are significantly lower than what they were in men, age match men, some 50 years ago. So let's talk about natural ways to support testosterone levels with a mineral known as zinc. This was a paper that just came out in March 2023. The title here is Correlation Between Serum Zinc and Testosterone, a Systematic Review. And this study looked at over 38 papers that have been published in the last several decades, finding eight clinical trials and 30 animal model studies that were conducted in this review, finding that zinc deficiency reduces testosterone levels and zinc supplementation improves testosterone levels. Furthermore, the effects uh, and the degree of zinc on serum testosterone may vary depending upon basal zinc and testosterone levels and zinc dosage form and the type of zinc, which is really important. But in conclusion, there is a positive association with zinc and total testosterone and a moderate supplementation can actually improve androgen levels and testosterone levels. So I really wanna dive into this because I get emails all the time. I see comments from men who have low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, inability to maintain lean muscle mass, and there's a lot of folks that are considering going on SARMs or HRT or testosterone. And why even consider any of those options until you've exhausted all of the natural resources and ways to support testosterone levels and health. And so zinc is so affordable. I mean, you can support your body's zinc levels for like 50 cents a day and possibly experience significant benefits when it comes to sperm motility and maintaining healthy testosterone levels. So I wanna to read to you some of, from this study and also other studies, because it's just, it's incredible that this is in front page news, considering the fact that low T is like a phenomenon now. Uh, as I mentioned, there's testosterone clinics on every corner. Men in their 20s and 30s are needing testosterone. Why even bother with that until we've exhausted every you know safe, natural solution first? So the scientists say zinc is an essential nutrient for the human body and functions in maintaining protein structure, enzyme catalysis, and information transmission. In the male reproductive system, it plays an important role in gonadal development, spermatogenesis, motility, and hormone synthesis, i.e. testosterone and other androgens. Testosterone, they say, is an androgen mainly synthesized and secreted by the Leydig cells of the testes in the male. It is an essential steroid hormone in male individuals' growth and development, which maintains secondary sex characteristics and promotes the maturation and release of sperm. Testosterone signally maintains blood testy barrier function and integrity, which plays an important environmental factor for germ cell development and sperm formation. But they say that zinc deficiency leads to structural changes within the testicles and impairs testosterone synthesis through oxidative stress and autophagy, adversely affecting the normal development of male gonads, affecting also spermatogenesis and fertilization. Studies have shown that the main reason for the reduction of testosterone levels and zinc deficiency is a change in the enzymatic conversion of testosterone in the testes. Zinc deficient Leydig cells fail to convert ingested sex steroid precursor into active hormones. So it's really involved in the conversion from say dihydroepiandosterone or DHEA into testosterone. Now, it's important to recognize that several of these studies don't outright say this, and this is me just inferring from what I've read and I've read extensively on this correlation between low zinc and low testosterone, is a lot of excessive ejaculation, possibly by masturbation with porn and pornography, could be actually driving one factor driving zinc deficiency. Also, people are not consuming animal products uh, and, and foods enriched in zinc and possibly consuming excessive amounts of phytates and other anti-nutrients that, that bind zinc, not eating a lot of whole bread foods and so forth. But that is really important to recognize that zinc deficiency could be in part by excessive masturbation. We know that porn addiction is quite common and that is really important to consider. But let's talk more about the androgen receptor in zinc. This is actually even more fascinating because some people have high serum testosterone, but they feel like crap. Uh, and I've had many clients who are actually on TRT. Their levels are super physiologic, but they still don't feel as though they have adequate testosterone. The scientists say the androgen receptor, a zinc finger protein, is the target of testosterone in Sartoli cells and somniferous tubules of the testes. The conversion of testosterone to its active form, dihydrotestosterone, DHT, requires 5-alpha reductase, which is dependent on zinc for its activity. So that could be part of it as well. Testosterone is high, but it's not getting converted to DHT, and that is affecting androgen synthesis and, and receptor binding. They say zinc deficiency may lead to decreased male hormone receptor activity. I just want to read that again. It's really important. Zinc deficiency may lead to decreased male hormone receptor activity. Therefore, zinc plays an important role in the biologic function of testosterone, not only in the synthesis, but on the receptor binding. 
really important. Now, before we continue on and talk about these other studies, I do just want to mention in the description below, I will link some products that I recommend to my clients who have low or suboptimal testosterone levels, including zinc, also morning wood, which is a bovine testicular extract that can be very effective for helping to maintain and support hormonal health in men, as well as DHEA. This can actually be under-recognized. I've gotten so many direct messages from men with their testosterone levels, their sexual hormone binding levels, and they say, gosh, I don't feel all that good. And their DHEA levels are quite low, like around 80 you really want to optimize this, especially if you're wanting to support hormonal health, again, in peri and postmenopausal women and men of all ages. Also in the description below, I will include some zinc that I recommend, which is a zinc bisglycinate chelate zinc bound to glycine, a very bioavailable form of zinc that can be effective uh, around 50 to 75 milligrams per day, usually at night is the dosages. So I'll link that below. The URL is myoscience.com, but all, everything will be linked below. But continuing on here, this was another recently published study. The title of this, and this was published in 2020, use of medicinal dosages of zinc as a safe and effective adjuvant for the treatment of male hypogonadism. So again, there's so many men that are hypogonadal, low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, low sperm motility, low, low sperm count. And we're focusing on all these other things, right? From synthetic exogenous testosterone. Why aren't we talking about this 50 cent per day or less treatment known as zinc? Because we know that if you sweat, if you exercise, if you go in the sauna, if you're not eating a lot of whole real foods, if you're eating a lot of grains that contain anti-nutrients that bind to these minerals, you could have a zinc deficiency. If you're watching a lot of porn and masturbating every single day or twice a day, you can induce a zinc deficiency. So it's really important to recognize that zinc plays a very important factor. And this was published in a journal here, it's The Aging Male. A lot of really good articles come from this. And they talk about how Zinc should be a primary treatment for hypogonadism and low testosterone in men. And they go into all the details and how it works and some great images. But I also want to share with you this study going back to 1996. So it's not like this research is new. This paper was published in 1996. The title here is Zinc Status and Serum Testosterone Levels in Healthy Adults. And what they found here is when they were able to induce a zinc deficiency in adults, there was a commensurate reduction in testosterone levels. And so this is really a, a causative factor. Zinc deficiency, that is, lowers testosterone levels. And conversely, when zinc was supplemented, testosterone levels literally increased. So again, for 25, 50 cents a day, if you're trying to support testosterone levels, especially if you go in the sun, if you exercise, if you sweat intentionally for all the benefits that we've talked about before, we know that zinc is one of the, the minerals that is released in sweat. If you're very sexually active with your partner and or you, know, you masturbate with porn, ejaculating a lot, you are possibly inducing a zinc deficiency because we know that zinc is concentrated in the testes and the Leydig cells and before it's impacts in testosterone biosynthesis. And so if you're burning through your zinc on both ends, through a lot of ejaculation and sweating and not getting enough micronutrition from your diet, then why shouldn't you have low testosterone? Because we now know that there's an intimate correlation and we could arguably say that zinc is causative uh, in terms of inducing a testosterone insufficiency if you have low zinc levels. So this was an interesting study going back to 1996. There was also a, a really interesting journal here in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, the effects of dietary zinc depletion on serum volume and zinc loss, serum testosterone concentrations and sperm motility in men. And this was the study that I was mentioning here where they had men look at ejaculation volumes and quantify zinc therein and seminal loss accounted for a 9% of total body zinc loss. So a lot of ejaculation will deplete your zinc body store. And so again, they say that there was a zinc loss of 1.4 milligrams per day with frequent ejaculation. So if you're not at least getting that from the diet, maybe you're on a vegan diet or you're sweating a lot, you're exercising a lot, you could be putting your body at risk for zinc deficiency and therefore a testosterone deficiency. So the scientists say, the findings suggest that serum testosterone concentrations, seminal volume, and total seminal zinc loss per ejaculation are sensitive to short-term zinc depletion in young men. So if you're trying to conceive, trying to have a child, then you should definitely consider supplementing with and in my opinion, 50 to 75 milligrams of zinc per day. If you're trying to optimize testosterone levels just to be healthy, uh, have better brain health, more drive, more vigor in your life, uh, body composition, sex, drive, libido, aim for 75 milligrams per day. Now, there are zinc copper ratios that you obviously need to consider, but if you've been running at a zinc deficit for a long time, I think several months of super physiologic zinc supplementation in the order, as I mentioned, 
50 to 75 milligrams of a zinc glycinate chelate would be worthwhile. So again, several studies show this correlation. I think this should be front page news, especially considering that so many men now have low testosterone and there are health ramifications linked with low testosterone. Um, increased risk of cardiovascular disease, cerebrovascular disease, depression, insulin resistance, increased belly fat. This is not like a benign condition here, low testosterone. This men need healthy levels of testosterone. We know that men uh, tend to have higher rates of insulin resistance, prediabetes, cardiovascular disease. So we should be optimizing testosterone with low cost and really low side effect profile endeavors like zinc supplementation. So hopefully you found this helpful along with this research. I think this is just incredibly fascinating and I wish more people were talking about it. So I appreciate you sharing the message. Thanks for sharing this video as a direct text message. I appreciate your comments. Appreciate you hitting that like button and we'll catch you in a future podcast down the road.